Welcome to another episode of the Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson. Shout out to Cam and Mace. Also, we're on the Come and Talk to Me Network. I'm with my guy that I love to run the two-man game with. Pick and roll, co-host Blue. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? How you all, feeling? All is well. You? I'm good. I'm good. You Thanks. setting the screen or are you coming off the screen? Uh, I'm setting this. No, I'm coming off the screen, but I'm delivering the bat, the pass to you, and then you take care of your I'm hand. popping. I'm shooting a three, man. Yeah, I know you are. All right. We here early. We here. You know I am. What you mean? You're, you're a shooter scorer. You're not trying to pass the basketball back. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right, let's take a moment and give a shout out to our, our, our sponsors. They're keeping the lights on, okay? Absolutely. Shouts out to Underdog Fantasy. Our favorite game is the Pick'em game. Go click the link in the description right now and use the promo code MARK. That's M-A-R-K for $100 matched. Go click the code right now. Thanks, Underdog. So, first things first, Pops. We got a new segment. We have a new segment? Yeah. Absolutely. You ready? I enjoyed your other one. What was it, man? Makes sense. Oh, yeah. Or man. Yeah, Come on. Let me see. Do it. Do it. No, no, no. We're man, not doing do it. No, Come no, on. No, no. Come on. Somewhere get down the road. Loosen somewhere. up. Come I'm, on. Let I'm, me do it I'm one loose. time. I'm loose. One time. I'm loose. Just, just give me the, the new man. new segment. The new segment. Nah, just give me the man one We're time. Live. We're live. We're <laughs> live. <laughs> All right. New segment, Pops. I'm going to kick it back. I don't know if you if, if, if it's copywritten, but it's one of your lines. It's, it's with all due respect. I like that. You like that? I like that. All right. It's a new segment called With All Due Respect. The fans have been asking for it. I see it in the comments. I'm going to give you a statement, and you're going to tell me, tell me what, your, what your opinion is with all due respect. With all, right? all due respect. I like that. All yeah. right. I know. Here we go. First topic. Here we go, man. Earlier this week, Kawhi Leonard and PG played on Saturday, decided to sit out on Sunday because the game was less than 24 hours after the game prior to. With all due respect, why is the NBA treating the Clippers like second-class citizens, man? What's going on? Is that an opinion? That's a fact. Why did, what, less than 24 hours? Okay. Well, with all due respect, I played 17 years, I coached three years, I announced almost 20 years. Every single team in the league has a gripe when the schedule comes out. Everybody has a, a gripe somewhere along the line in their schedule that they're not happy with, not pleased with. So it's not an excuse for the Clippers. At the end of the day, you, you play the schedule that's dealt to you, you handle your business. And um, what's important to me is looking at that schedule, you gotta realize it's one win, one loss, two wins, two losses away from having the wrong seed come playoff time. So whatever the schedule is, handle your business, be professional, and uh, it could be a lot worse. My dad didn't complain when he had to go five, six days a week, transit authority in New York City. There was no low management then. Pop up wasn't getting paid $200 million. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I wouldn't be here right now. If I'm getting paid $200 million, don't ask me to play like we at our local LA Fitness. Here's, here's the problem. If, we, if you and I went to the local LA Fitness today yeah. and played, yeah. you're waking up tomorrow and say, Dad, you, you, you going, let's go back to the gym and play. You have no problem playing back-to-back -back days less than 24 hours when you, we're doing it for free. So it shouldn't be an issue today. And I'm not sounding like an old school hater. I just think that it's basketball. But this is, they've been playing basketball since they was 15. They did this since AAU, all weekend games, back to back to back to back. And now you can make it to the NBA at the highest level in you can't get 24 hours between a game? With all due respect, take the game off, come playoff time, you get the wrong matchup, you have plenty of time to relax and enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> With all due respect, I'll take that answer. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. All right. Here we go. With all due respect, the Lakers could be hitting their stride with recent wins over the Bucks, Thunder, and Timberwolves. What do you say to those that still don't believe that the Lakers are it? They ready, man. It's our season. They're not it, but they're dangerous. So with all due respect, I say watch out for the Los Angeles Lakers, especially put some respect on the name of Anthony Davis. Thank you. I looked throughout, spent some time the other day, and I looked at all the big men in basketball. Anthony Davis is the third best big man in basketball behind Nicole Jokic and Joel Embiid. And I'm not sure, I don't think it's close. His impact on the game on the defensive end, on the offensive end, blocking shots, stealing the basketball, setting the tone defensively, scoring much needed, that second score after LeBron James. LeBron James is great. Anthony Davis makes them complete. And if I'm any team in the Western Conference, 
I do not want to face Los Angeles Lakers. I say that with all due respect. The reason why is because they have the ability to force you to play at their pace. They got a guy that controls the tempo in LeBron. They got a guy that controls the defensive end of the floor. And they got some role players that's playing really well. D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, Rudy Hachimura, that bench. Darvin Ham has done a very good job, and that's a dangerous team for anybody to have to face come playoff time. I say that respectfully. Can we get some love for AD in the Defensive Player of the Year conversation? He's in the discussion. He gotta be now. He's absolutely in the discussion. It'll be an interesting closeout to the season. I think Rudy Gobert's setting the tone for that Minnesota Timberwolves basketball team defensively, having them the number one ranked defensive team and having a lot to do with it. Anthony Davis is in the discussion. I think goes down to the wire. I need to know your opinion on D'Lo, man, because I watch him and on a given night, he can literally play like the best point guard in the NBA. And then on another night, he can be questionable. I'm not sure, uh, well, he's not the best point guard in basketball. And that's not a knock on him. What he is, is an elite offensive weapon at the point guard position. You can put him in isolation, you can put him in pick and rolls, his ability to get to his spot, use that under, underrated size that he has, skill, lull you to sleep, take tough shots and make tough shots. He is a, a big time talent on the offensive end and a guy that you have to be able to give him enough rope to, 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 to play his brand of basketball because at LeBron's best, he had a guy that was creative at the point guard position. You look at Kyrie Irving and success. You have to be able to say to D'Lo, take over the game, and then when he gets a little crazy, reel him in, but give him the leeway to play with extreme confidence. That dude got game, man. He does, absolutely. All right, we're going to keep it in L.A. with this next one. On February 3rd, James said that he has not yet made a decision on his player option. It's $51.4 million. Will LeBron be a Laker next year? With all due respect. With all due respect, it depends. And you threw 51 million, 51.4 million, like he's not a billionaire. He's, he's fine. That, that money is not going to move the needle. Well, it'll move the needle, but it won't move the needle as far as his decision-making process on whether to become a free agent. He has already documented his desire to play with Bronny at some point. Bronny comes out, if you're LeBron, I don't, I don't take my option. I wait until I know where my son's gonna be. And if he means what he says, and he's sitting back waiting for that opportunity, and now there's gonna be 30 teams wanting to sign LeBron James. And if you're the Lakers, you make sure. Like I said before, I'm drafting Bronny James if he's on the board in the second round or if I don't have a desired guy late in the first, I'm taking him with the thought process of I'm putting pressure on LeBron. You really want to play with your son? Come join us, no matter who I am. 51.4 million is a lot for anybody. No, it is a lot, of, a money. lot of money. It is a lot of money. It's a boatload of money. Yeah. LeBron James is a max player next year. So he's going to make his money, whether it's with the Lakers or somebody else. And I think that's the beautiful thing about this upcoming offseason. As much as people want to say that Bronny won't play in the NBA. I'm sorry, newsflash, he's gonna be in the NBA one way or, or another, he's gonna be there. So get your hate out now, be mad now, but LeBron James will be playing with his son at some point. I'm, like, it's, it's, just a, it's just a given. Think about how incredible that is. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, that's something we've never seen, and I'll go so far as to say we won't see it again. It's an incredible accomplishment. When you think about the percentages of that occurring, Touche and well well done for the, for the James game. All right, you ready for the next one? Yes, sir. Here we go. Let's talk about the East. I'm going to declare something, man, and just let the chips fall where they may, all right? Oh, you ready for this? Put my seat fell on. It's a two-team race in the East, Dad. It's only two teams. I don't want to hear about anybody else. The Celtics and the Bucks. That's it. I don't want to hear nobody else. With all due respect, you're so disrespectful. What are you no, no, seriously, seriously. No, what seriously. you mean, man? What, what are we doing? I don't want to hear another team's name. No, what are we doing? You, you, there are other teams in this league. There's other teams in the Eastern Conference that are dangerous. And I don't think, whether you look at the Bucks or the Celtics, they've proven to be unbeatable. They've shown weaknesses, especially the Bucks. Celtics, obviously, at home are, are incredible. And they have a brand of basketball and identity that they play to their strengths. They're a three-point shooting team they defend. They're versatile, led by Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown setting, setting the tone. But they are beatable. And if I'm one of those other teams in the Eastern Conference, you look at Miami, you look at Cleveland, 
who has put together a, a run in this season. Injury, injuries ha have hit them, but they've been able to find themselves at least a half a game in the discussion for the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. Uh, you look at that Nick team. You look at that Pacer team. Uh, it, it, look at Chicago getting hot at the right time. I believe that Styles makes fights, and it's going to be very interesting come playoff time, the matchups, and uh, some teams are going to be vulnerable. So I would not go as far as you're going to say it's a two-team race. I think it's wide open. You're disrespectful. <laughs> Why am I disrespectful? No, no, <laughs> to say it's only a two-team. That's a two it, team. man. We got to keep it real. Who's beating the Celtics in the East? Who? I we think watch that, them dudes. Them dudes are dogs. Jason Tatum is a dog. Chris Stapps is a dog. Jalen Brown? Jalen Brown is a dog. No question. Like I, what? I'm not here to debate that they are not the favorites. I'm here to debate that they are the favorites, though. They, they are the favorites. Yeah. I agree with you, but that's not what you said. You it's said it's a two-team two race. Who's that's right totally different. That's totally different than being the favorite, and it's only a two-team race. Like, nobody else has a chance. I disagree with that statement. With all due respect, I disagree with your statement. <laughs> so disrespectful. <laughs> All right, can we do can we do another yes, one? Yes, yes. You ready? You liking this segment so I'm far? I'm enjoying it. This is yours. You two for two with segments. Thank you, thank you. Shouts out to shouts out to our producer Jeff. Man. Yes. Shouts out to Jeff. He's oh, the, you're a veteran now. You giving best, shout outs. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. He is he's doing an outstanding job, he's doing and it's best. not going unnoticed. That's right. All right, pal. Spinning off of that question, Dame Lillard recently said that him and Giannis are growing as teammates. Their chemistry and their communication is improving every single game. How much of that is a real thing? And in your situation with Reggie Miller, how long did it take you to get that type of championship chemistry? With all due respect, I'll tell you this. Reggie Miller is a natural shooter scorer. I'm a natural passer facilitator. So it was love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will say we didn't have to develop chemistry. It was natural. The difference with us and Giannis and Dame is those are two Batman. Reggie was Batman and Robin. Uh, those two guys, it's a question when you need a hoop and you're down the stretch of a ball game, who's going to get the basketball? It was no question with Reg and I. I was going to play off of his ability to create a double team and then I'd get a shot. With Damon, with Giannis, it depends on who's rolling, who's hot, what the matchup is. I'm more concerned about their communication setting the tone on the defensive end. Offensively, they're all-time greats. Defensively is where that team will push themselves and find themselves uh, into the NBA Finals and have a real chance. They have to communicate and buy in defensively, and that'll take away from the inconsistency, ups and downs uh, throughout the course of the season of, oh, they're the favorite, oh, they're going to get eliminated in the first round. Those are two proven guys, and now you have a, a, a future Hall of Fame head coach in Doc Rivers. That's a dangerous team I would not want to face in the playoffs. Who do you have better chemistry with? I'm going to put you on the spot. Reggie Miller or Patrick Ewing? Oh, that's a great question. I had great chemistry with both guys. I was young and a rookie coming in. So Patrick forced me to have chemistry because when he threw that right hand up and he gave you that, you know, growl and the sweat coming down his forehead, demanding the basketball. You had no choice. You had no choice. You had no <laughs> choice. No, no. But two two guys that are brothers, family for life, and obviously two of the best to ever do it. With all due respect. All right. We got one more, all right? I got to give a shout out to my ladies. This is for y'all. The WNBA. You giving a shout is, out to the ladies? Huh? It's oh, the, the ladies. WNBA. Oh, okay, the, the WNBA. Ladies. Oh, I thought, okay. You, you Look mean, at you getting it twisted. No, I, know, I know you're in the comments. Simmer so, down. Uh, Simmer down. <laughs> Simmer down. <laughs> go ahead. Anyways, get your head out the gutter, man. <laughs> shout out to the ladies, my WNBA players. With all due respect, they starting to get more respect, but is it enough respect for the WNBA and women's cal college basketball? With all due respect, let's put some respect on the women's game. I'm telling you what, the other day I sat around and I watched Caitlin Clark, I watched LSU against South Carolina, I watched Stanford against USC, I watched Juju Watkins, I watched uh, Dawn Staley who doesn't get enough credit as far as brilliance orchestrating and being a maestro for that South Carolina school, 10, ten seasons, eight conference championship games, champ, national championship. She's, she's putting on a clinic on how to coach and how to lead basketball players. Uh, it's a fun time. And uh, I, I mean, I had an opportunity to watch college games, women's, 
I had an opportunity to watch NBA games. At the same time, I could watch baseball. I was glued to the TV watching the, the uh, college women's game. It is a fine time and well-deserved uh, recognition uh, that the game is in safe hands. And I tell you, we rave about the skill level of the men in today's game being so superior to the old school ones, rightfully so. You can make the same exact case for the women. The skill level of these women playing basketball today is out of this world. With all due respect. With all due respect. I don't know what to add to that. because that's You just did your thing just now. That was Mark Jackson, I, top of the line. You did your thing. I don't know what to comment. You know what's funny? I got a, a friend, I'm not going to name him, Jeff Van Gundy, who believes he played Division Three basketball. <laughs> and he believes, he believes that him, now this is, this is his argument, him and uh, another coach, let's say Tom Thibodeau, he believes that two on two they could beat like Caitlin Clark and Juju Watkins. No, no, don't put that on him. No, he, he didn't he, say he don't really believe that. Well, not Tom Thibodeau today, but Jeff Van Gundy and somebody like him could beat Caitlin Clark and Juju Watkins. He doesn't really believe. He it. believes stop, it. Stop it. Stop and the, it. I, I, I sit there and let's say we are at breakfast and I say you don't believe that. He'll get out of the chair from the restaurant and get in the defensive stance and like, what's she gonna do to this? I'm like, are you kidding me, man? Man, are you kidding me? If you don't sit down and finish your hot tea, man, it's a it's a 14 year old girl at my church that will cook, Coach Jeff. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. I'm not what? gonna. Say, no, no, man, no. these girls are nice. Years. Not a 14 year old. Girl. Man, these they, they're nice. I'm telling you, these these girls in high school got game. No, I agree with that. We they just, got game. I agree with. Don't act like I'm going against them. I just gave them a shout out no, with all no, due respect. No. Don't shout that out with all due respect, <laughs> Coach, 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 Coach. You've been around the game for too long, man. These women. are now, I agree. Every time you get on the court with them, they got something in their bag. Tell they're shifty. Tell them. I told they, them. They'll cook you, coach. Tell them. They'll cook you, coach. <laughs> Please don't gas me. Don't. <laughs> no, I love you, coach. But these women are, they tough nowadays. They tough. All right, man. My bad. We actually got one more question. One more. And we're going to keep it in the family with this one. So we talked about my uncle, your brother, Escalade, Troy Escalade Jackson. And... What I want to know is somebody in the comments said that somebody said that Uncle Troy is the closest thing we've seen to Jokic. What's with all due respect? What's your opinion on that? With all due respect, get, give me this camera. <laughs> <laughs> with all due respect, Troy Escalade Jackson, my younger brother, the youngest of five, same parents, same mom, same dad, and the youngest of five. I see the similarities of Joker and Escalade. Seven foot tall, 6'10". I see the size, the width. I see the high IQ, genius as far as basketball minds. I also see the ability to play the point guard position at their size and their strength, the ability to initiate offense. I also see their elite post skills. But with all due respect, my brother looking down from heaven would say, handle it for me. You're out of line. You're out of line. Similarities? Are you kidding me? I'm here to tell you right now that Joker today is a top seven center to have ever played this game and he's climbing the charts. I can only think of five that hands down have him beat, but he's a top seven center in the history of this game. Don't you dare com compare him to my younger brother. And I love my brother and I'm biased, but there's no comparison. Appreciate it with all due respect. With all due respect. Can I get an amen? No. With all due respect, I'm standing up for Uncle Troy this morning. Rest in peace. He could cook Jokic. He was oh. a joker and my uncle was a joker. I'm yeah. standing on it. I'm not going to argue with you, but there's no comparison. Bro. Nah, it's, I'm it's sure no he appreciates the love. Yeah, there's no comparison. But You think about it. My brother, I can remember my brother sitting in the room with, with his teammates on the N1 Mixtape Tour arguing because they thought they were better than or comparable to an NBA player. And he's was one of the guys that would sit there and be like, y'all are, are delusional. Y'all are out of your mind. These guys are on a whole different level than we're on. He was, he, he, because he lived it and he experienced it and he knew how hard it was to get from there to the next level. So it, it, he would certainly hold me accountable if I didn't check the people. Appreciate the love, but you're out of line. Yeah, that, that difference in an uh, NBA player and a, even a college player is, is distinct. I remember when we were at, um, we were at a sports club and I thought I was nice. I was playing at Louisville and remember Roger Mason torched me? How could I forget? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was, I promise. I thought he was just a, I was like, this dude got game. He's just a spot up shooter. 
That dude turned into Kobe for 45 minutes. Did he miss a shot? No. <laughs> I still get PTSD. <laughs> if I see him on a highlight, I'm like, <laughs> I got to turn the other way, man. So it's real. That that separation between NBA players and, and just a, a, a dude that plays ball. And it's not saying that those guys aren't accomplished and tremendous basketball players. It's yeah. just it's just a different level. Yeah. What's, what's your best big brother, little brother uh, uh, story for us? Wow, there's a million of them. One that comes to mind, probably two. He was the youngest of five. There's about a 10 year difference between my sister who's a year younger than me and Troy Escalade, obviously. And so my dad now only had to worry about basically one kid come Friday payday. So my dad felt like this was, he was on his, you know, on his own basically. And he'd take him to McDonald's every Friday after work when he get to check. Well, how did he become 6'10", 400 plus pounds? One Big Mac turned into two Big Macs. <laughs> One fry turned into two fries. Hey so, man, hey man, so, hey man. So, <laughs> so I'm getting hungry. It was funny to watch him all of a sudden blossom into, you know, a, a bigger kid. Yeah. And and the other story that jumps out is, we go to the park and we play, and he was escalated at this time, and to balance it out, we'd be on separate teams. And I can remember it was point game, and he had the ball going on a break getting ready to dunk in Long Island. And I'm like, you know me, I'm trying to win. I take him out in midair, push him into the fence. They got to take the ball out of bounds. He's like, are you kidding me? He's ready to fight me. Like, are you kidding? I'm like, yo, dude, I'm trying to win the game. It ain't no brother, big brother, little brother. I'm trying to win. I'm not going to have you go back home and let everybody know that you just finished winning this basketball game. It's not going to happen. But he, he realized right away how serious of a competitor I was and uh, fun times. But somebody that... I'm proud of and, and, and uh, had a million great stories about. I'm glad you shared that with me just now because it made me feel better about a story that I got. What's your story? So when I, was at, when I was playing at Louisville, we had to go to Nassau, Bahamas to play in a tournament. So we played against some of the, basically the national bohemian team. Great experience. It was nice. We were staying at one of those hotels. It was really nice. Great. Before we played the, the bohemian team, we basically had to scrimmage against each other in front of the boosters, some of the fans. I wasn't in the starting five at that point. I was a freshman. So it was the starting five and probably the two best players against the bench. It was essentially a showcase for us to get torched in front of the, in front of the boosters. We get down by about 25 points, 30 points. These are still my teammates that we're playing against. I'm, I'm sitting on the bench hot because these dudes are throwing it off the backboard, dunking. Yelling, slapping fives. Coach Patino's on that side coaching. I'm over here with the assistant <laughs> coaches. I'm like, this is crazy, man. So I check in the game. They up by about 30. The crowd is going wild. My boy Shane Mahanan goes up for fast break dunk, ready to do a windmill. I'm like, nah, nah. I'm not letting it go down. <laughs> when I tell you I ran full speed, and took this dude out in front of the boosters, Coach Patino, everybody. Shane, Shane was one of the top players in the country at that time. And so what it looked like was me, a freshman, somebody who wasn't on the, on the, on the court much, taking out our best player. Right, right. <laughs> Essentially, from my, my standpoint, I'm looking like, man, nah, this is a competitive spirit. I'm, I'm being Westbrook. I'm being Draymond right now. Like, you ain't going to show us up. Man, Shane was okay. We went into the locker room. And Coach Patino laid out to me, <laughs> laid me out like never before in front of the whole team. He was like, son, you lucky. If Shane was hurt, you'd be on the first flight back to California. <laughs> and ever since then, I, I, I recognized, I'm like, all right, all right, it's levels to this. Let me just, let me play my role for a little bit. But I'm glad to know that I got it from somewhere. I appreciate you, Dad. Yeah, but that's, no, no, no I'm going to dap you up, but there's no similarities in the story. What you mean? Uncle Troy wasn't on my team. We wasn't playing for something moving forward. I wasn't a, I wasn't a little bit of a, for lack of a better term, head case. So wow. I, I mean, and in, in the same wow. scenario, no, no. Wow. In the wow. Same, no, wow. No, no. Sit, I can see you sitting on the <laughs> bench wait, waiting to get called upon. And then, okay, when I get in there, it's on. I'm not going to have Ish Smith take out Steph Curry in the middle of practice. That's what it was. Yeah, that's, that's different than me taking out Uncle Troy. We're not playing the next day on he the He was same your brother, team. though. So yeah, you could take out your own. You could take out your own brother, yeah, but not. Yeah, you got to you got to understand see, the competitiveness. I he, we, I didn't need him the next day. Yeah, we needed him the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't setting screens. <laughs> All 
All right, man. I'm gonna let you, you. You took shots at me back just now. No, no, subtle. Yeah, I thought, subtle. They, I thought, I they, I thought they rolled by. Nah, nah. It was a drive by. <laughs> it was a drive by. All right, man. So we're gonna do flashback time. So it used to be called picture time for the ones that watch, but we're gonna switch up the name. It's flashback time now. We got, we got, we got to, we got to loosen up some things. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah, I think I'm. I'm getting a little bit concerned because you're giving shout outs to executive producer. You now changing names of the segment. I mean, what I need I to say, show. Up, I need to show up early. I almost wore my shades during this episode. I'm trying to, you know, yeah. get I, it. That's next, huh? That's next. You know? Yeah. Do you? Thank you. That's all. <laughs> that's what I need for my pops. Let me do me, man. Yeah, Let me get ahead. in my bag. Go ahead, go Thank ahead. you. Loosen up. <laughs> Thank you. Now back to the pictures. <laughs> Can we put that picture up? Let's give some flowers to your college coach and legend, Lou Conaseca. He's 99 years young. This is a crazy pick, man. You got some stories with you, you and coach? Yeah, there's a, a million stories with coach and I. Um, love him to death. Uh, 99 years old. And the thing that means the most to me, um, if, you looked at, if you looked at my phone and you looked at 20 voicemails, 18 of them say Coach Conaseca. He will call me, and uh, his, his whole battle right now is, Jax, we got to get you in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I'm like, Coach, I'm good. He's like, no, 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 it's not about you. It's about the people around you that supported you. You deserve it. And he goes, I, ha I used to have a lot of people that I can call and move the needle. He said, but. Ones I know are dead. <laughs> he, he, said, he said all his connects are long gone. He's 99 years old. The funniest thing, though, he says his birthday is January 5th, I believe. He, he called me. Uh, on his, I called him on his birthday, wish him happy birthday. He said, I, I stayed up to midnight. <laughs> Had to make sure to get this one in. But he, he, is, he is as sharp as he's ever been. At 99 years old, he can tell you who played for him in 1940, you know, who was his backcourt in 1950. I mean, he has great stories. And that's the relationship you want with a coach. I used to watch my, my kids with their high school coaches and you walk into the gym now and they, the kids, my kids and kids that played for them won't even speak. That's embarrassing to me. When you are a coach, your job is to impact, not just on the court, but off the court. And Coach Connor Secker, to this day, I'm. 58 years old, I don't call him Luke on a second. He's coach for life because of what he, what he means to me and the impact he had on my life. And I think that's, if you're going to wear that title, wear it across the board and make guys like him proud. No, this is a beautiful picture, man. 99 years, it's almost, almost at 100, man. That is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. A, a life filled with impact in lives and making a difference. Yes, sir. Salute, coach. I know you was hurt after kneeling down like this in this picture, though. That was actually when we was filming a documentary we had called uh, Point Gods. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a way to, way to subtly flex yeah, yeah, and know. drop that nugget. Yeah. You, you, you produced, you yeah, produced yeah, that, right? Yeah, one of the producers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jeff's not the only producer. Right? Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Coming for your spot. All right, watch it, Jeff. I'll help you pop his tires when we leave here. <laughs> all right. Let's pick up another picture, man. Let's go to your other home, Brooklyn, man. I see you here with Hove. What you got to say about this picture? Greatness. In my opinion, the greatest rapper that's ever lived. Uh, a guy that obviously, I went, to, I went to high school blocks away from where he was raised. And in one of his songs, he says he's balling like Lachlan. That is Bishop Lachlan, the state champs my senior year in Brooklyn, uh, in New York. He is absolutely genius. I said the best that ever do it in my opinion and every time I see him there's nothing but love respect laughs and uh, stories um, somebody that I, I not only respect his his game as a as a rapper but as a businessman and his impact in society today making a difference across the board uh, salute and uh, this is a, a, a picture that I value because like I said these pictures I'm think about a guy from Brooklyn and Queens, New York, dreaming the big dreams. I'm in pitches with absolute greatness all throughout the ones that you've shown, and this is consistent with that also. So shout out to Jigga Man, 
Jay Z. And one, the biggest mistake I ever made as a as a media person, as an announcer, I announced Nets games for three years. So the so the Nets, I was and he was a minority owner, and they had a, an event where I was I was the MC, and I had to um, introduce Jay Z. Now I said. He's the best rapper that's ever lived, in my opinion. I say that today, I said it then, I believe that. You know how big of a Jay-Z fan I am. And I had to introduce him, and I go, give it up for the greatest rapper that's ever lived, Sean Jay-Z Combs. What, what the heck? Think about, think about that. I said, what? And as soon as I said that, I said, did you just say that? I made the, 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 the biggest mistake that I could possibly make in my media career as an announcer, I introduced Jay Z, who are you? Yeah, I made a mistake. <laughs> what? Did you say something after? Of course I did, but you can't take how, that back. How the, how the conversation? That's like go? him saying, "Give it up for Mark Johnson." That's what no, I'm saying. No bring it back. How the conversation go? Because I'm sure yeah. he played it off like yeah. it's all good, Jack. But deep down inside, yeah. he like, you "Yeah, me. that hurt. That hurt uh, me." I, I never told that story before. I'm, in, like, I'm embarrassed. It's like therapy for you, huh? I'm embarrassed. You're feeling good. I've been holding on to no, that, but just in case chest. the tape comes out, I want to let you know I said it first. <laughs> I'm ashamed of myself. That's an honest mistake. That's that's a stupid mistake. That is a stupid mistake. Especially you know how I feel about it. I was just trying to make you feel a little bit better. No, it, did, it, it didn't do anything. It was a terrible mistake. Yeah, it didn't do anything for me. <laughs> didn't do anything for me. I appreciate the attempt, though. Yeah, I'm just, it's all right. Just get it. Anything else you want to get off your chest? Sean Jay-Z Carter. There we go. Yes, I got it. Any, anything I've been else? waiting for another opportunity. No, no, we good. You want to do like a public apology? Uh, public uh, announcement. You like how, like how I did that? Was that was nice. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. All right. Let's give a shout out to our sponsors. Absolutely. Underdog Fantasy. Click the link in the description below and you can get up to $100 matched. Use the promo code MARK. That's M-A-R-K. Go play our favorite game, the Pick'em game. Click the link. Thanks. That does it for another episode of the Mark Jackson Show on the Come and Talk to Me Network. Just a reminder, here's a gem for you. Give an encouraged word to somebody. Make somebody's day. You never know who needs it, and you never know the impact that you will have just by taking a moment and depositing a quality word into somebody's life. Blessings. Blessings.